cry of an angel clad in clothes, or sufferings of a man with an angel. Instead of a soul. To whom and why am I writing these lines? Most likely to myself. Abiding in a holy place for years, just twice have I been recognized, and only by the people with the soul that is, by God's will, free from the mind. A human mind is a stumbling stone, perhaps, an entire cliff facing the soul. One cannot go around or leap over it. To climb up over sharp stones, scraping your nails until they bleed and falling down the slippery ledges, sweet from the mind, then to get up anew, having regained spiritual strength, and crawl again, is not for everyone. For it's so lovely, cozy, sweet, and warm at the cliff's foot. The mind, of frail clothes, creates illusions of anything you wish for. So long as you keep wishing. Wishing for earthly love with a blazing hearth, for children to prolong your clan, for wealth, for fame, it's all the same. So long as you keep wishing. Wishing, wishing, and it will all be given. In one illusion or another, it matters not, so long as you keep wishing. Wishing. Wishing for the earthly. But it's so hard, cry many people. No, it's not. So many times I put the clothes on. I roamed an endless road with just a staff, feeding the flesh with only what I found. I was a king and ruled for long over the countless peoples. And every time the clothing was too tight, it hampered me and hindered me from living. It shook with fear and got sick, and, like all others, at first, it wished for much until I tamed it. That wild beast, of which all clothes are woven, fears just its master, just the soul. But many fear the soul more than the beast, the soul that hinders their lives just like the clothing hinders mine. I cannot understand such people. To trade all of eternity for only just one instant? What is the point here? To suffer in the arms of the beast's skin, to serve the clothes decaying day by day. Is life in this? Life is infinite. It has no suffering, it does not tear, for it's impossible to wear out the soul. The clothing has no home, there's just a closet where it is kept for only a short while. Only the soul has a true home. And it's the soul that, yearning for eternity, begets this sense of home, for which man searches his entire life. Rigdon Japo Over the years that passed, after the first books had been published, many events have happened, which convinced me once again that a sincere desire of a single person to help people, together with his or her real actions and self-perfection, do bear surprisingly wonderful fruit. And it's not even about the books as reading matter, but rather, about comprehension and putting the knowledge given in them into practice. A book is a means of transferring the knowledge, the knowledge not in the sense of property or one's own conclusion but as wisdom from above that passes through centuries. The wisdom like an open gate for entering into that wonderful higher state of spirituality, through which the insight comes from the one who created everything. The wisdom that always was, is, and will be, even when the memory of its human conductors vanishes in the dust of ages. It is this wisdom, like a genuine seed, that gives good seedlings in a person, helping him to free his mind from the niche of human fears and narrow vaults of the darkness of delusions, to overcome the solidity of material thinking, and to discover the boundless realm of cognizing the truth. It helps him to rise above his earthly selfhood and to see the world from the height of spiritual view without prejudices and material blinders. The wisdom endows a person with sincerity and a sense of purpose, enriches him with comprehension and raises the level of his responsibility for the spiritual quality of his life. This eternal wisdom for a spiritual person is like vivifying water for a ripe ear of wheat grown from a good grain. It allows one to realize the root of human troubles and to improve the atmosphere of one's spiritual life. It gives the main keys to understanding the complex reality of a human being and the world and serves as the source of creating unique conditions for the human being to shape a spiritual society in the cruel world of the material animal mind. The eternal wisdom allows the human being to transform himself spiritually and to know the hidden essence of past and future events. This wisdom is precisely the constructive principle created by him, which opens for each person, who has accepted it, 
the path to his eternity. Rigdon, there is an essential difference between those who ask questions from the mind and those who are guided by the thirst of searching for the truth. In the world, they only teach intellect, memory, and knowledge that comes from logic. Whereas, when cognizing the truth, one must master elevated stage of self-perfection, awareness, and understanding of those deepest spiritual feelings that emanate from the soul. After all, the spiritual experience lies beyond the boundaries of the mind. Anastasia, yes, you have mentioned this before. However, it is only now, after years of working on myself each day, once I started to feel and understand information in a comprehensive way, that I've realized in practice what this spiritual experience which lies beyond the mind is. The spiritual understanding of the world and myself helped me a lot in this, thanks to the unique knowledge which has been entering the world through you. Not that many years have passed since the publication of the first books through which spiritual grains of wisdom have been shared with people. People welcomed the books with more than just gratitude. Encountering this wisdom, the souls of many of them, like a pluck string, are making an inaudible triumphant sound. Even more than that, these books are making even those people hesitate in their choice in whose consciousness the animal nature dominates. People started to work on themselves more diligently, to try to control their thoughts, to understand the direction in which to go in their development and the essence of their spiritual needs, and to see the eternal grains in traditional beliefs. Readers of these books did not just start awakening, they began growing spiritually. And this can be traced by the evolution of their questions. The first question that is usually rashly asked by the majority from their human mind is whether the main characters of the books really exist or not and whether they are fiction or truth, particularly the main character Sensei. Rigdon smiled in a friendly way. Others, feeling inner heartfelt joy, hasten to ask a question in the format of the consumer thinking template, I've read the latest book, when will the next one come out? Still others attempt to do the spiritual practices described in the books, in fact, without changing their material priorities, so they are in a state of constantly arguing with themselves. And questions coming from them are of the same nature, I've been doing spiritual practices, but no miracle is happening and nothing in my life is changing. Rigdon, the human being is dual by nature. The human mind can easily shift from one extreme to another, thus creating chaos and instability. The outer is just a reflection of the inner. Anastasia, but there are those who got imbued with the depth of the knowledge. This has profoundly changed their lives. They do not need any proof of the evidence that the spiritual prevails over the logic of the mind. They are firm in their life choice. Such people are pure in their souls, and their consciousness is not bogged down in the behavior patterns of world egocentrism and personal doubts. They are like lotus flowers, once they are lit up with sun rays, they reach out for the light. This is why the quality of their questions regarding the inner is completely different. Their questions come neither from logic nor from the human mind, but rather from the deepest feelings as if invisible communication is taking place between souls. Rigdon, the deepest feelings are exactly the special language that differs from the human one. When the person overcomes the lowest of the low within himself, works on himself each day, develops and transforms himself spiritually as a human being, he becomes enlightened. When the person evolves spiritually, he encounters questions from his mind. Experience in spiritual practices makes him aware of the fact that his material brain is limited in its perception and is a part of the body, the body is perishable and finite. As for the soul dwelling inside him, it is invisible, yet eternal. He understands that it is impossible to precisely express the experience of his feelings in the words of the mind. After all, Spiritual practices are only tools that help to reveal, know, and unfold the deepest human feelings, through which his communication with the superiors from the beyond takes place in their language, the language of the deepest feelings. That is why the divine cannot be spoken of directly since any thought would be just an allegory. For the divine is a different language, a language not of the mind but of the deepest feelings, which is understood by the soul of any person. 
it is the universal language of human souls. This is exactly the language of truth. Anastasia, yes, such experience indeed comes with practice. I have come to understand that there is a significant difference between associations of the mind and understanding specifically with the deepest feelings. It is difficult to share your own experience in words. Although people who are on the same spiritual wavelength with you understand you without any words. Rigdon, the question of how to share one's spiritual experience and explain the genuine reality to people has always troubled those who have truly known the truth. It is difficult to convey the substance of personal spiritual experience in words because it is an experience of cognition of an entirely different world, which is unlike the material one. In other words, everything you say will be interpreted by the material thinking through the prism of experience of this world and, consequently, will either be misunderstood or distorted in perception. Furthermore, out of thousands of listeners, only a few will actually hear. The rest will not benefit from this. After all, the facets of reality are known only to the one whose eye is observing it. Anastasia, there are also readers with a rich life experience. By human standards, they have succeeded in many things in their lives, achieved much, and got the opportunity to change a lot in the world around them. The knowledge has touched their soul, but the resonance arising from their learnedness does not give them peace of mind. And, though they ask questions from the logic based on their life experiences, yet the essence of their inquiries comes from their spiritual. It feels that such people want to know the answer, not because of an idle brain, but because they want to change the world for the better. I considered one of such questions important and essential enough to address it to you, for the answer to it may fundamentally change people's worldview and influence the global choice of the civilization. The question is as follows, is there such knowledge which people will not be able to use for military purposes, but which will be able to shake up the official sciences and lead an inquisitive mind to a direct scientific proof of the origin of the material world from the spiritual world, that is, the creation of the world by God? Rigdon, yes, I see this question coming from a person who yearns for the truth. Well, if people are already asking such a question, it means that it is time to reveal the answer to it. Yes, such knowledge does exist. It relates to the branch of astronomy, or rather, the science of astrophysics which studies phenomena in outer space as well as the evolution and interactions of celestial bodies and their systems. Taking into account that at the current stage of its development, astrophysics uses new discoveries in modern physics as well as the most recent achievements of the scientific and technical advances, the information which will enrich it will consequently in many ways aid the development of physics itself as the science studying the general patterns of natural phenomena. And if people understand the laws of physics deeply enough, they will be able to arrive, by means of science, to the real proof that the spiritual world is primary, and the material world is secondary. Consequently, this will change the quality and the meaning of human life and will open another way to the attainment of the truth, namely, through science. Anastasia, this knowledge would indeed be very timely. As far as I know, astrophysicists have been trying to research the issues of evolution and to answer the perennial questions what was, and what will be. However, despite the present leap in science, it is quite difficult for people to do that. And there are many reasons for that. It is known that today the knowledge about stars is, in many respects, based on the spectral analysis of electromagnetic radiation of celestial objects, that is, on the information received thanks to the study of weak flows of electromagnetic waves coming from celestial objects to the Earth. And all of these besides the visible light, including radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma radiation, are electromagnetic waves of a different wavelength, which are either shorter or longer than the rays that are visible to the human eye. Generally speaking, whatever instruments people have invented, thanks to the latest scientific breakthroughs, is what they saw. Rigdon, among the cosmic ocean of a multitude of waves of all different kinds of natures, these electromagnetic waves, which are known to the present-day science, 
occupy by spectrum just a small interval of radiation. Anastasia, that's the problem. After all, the work of modern physicists is similar to the person who attempts to find out what the whole present world is like by looking through a narrow slit, which shows just a limited area, and then only of the distant past and not the present, not to mention the future. If you ask yourself what light is, according to the present-day science, the answer will be that, in a narrow sense of this notion, light is electromagnetic waves within the frequency range perceived by the human eye, in a broader sense, it is optical radiation. Considering the speed of light known to scientists, it is no wonder that they see many phenomena related to stars as something that happened a long time ago. Thus, in fact, they are observing the processes that took place millions of years ago. Rigdon, smiling indeed, when the species of Homo sapiens did not yet exist on this planet. Anastasia, that is interesting. Scientists believe that modern humans appeared up to 40,000 years ago, and the first authentic Homo sapiens as a representative of the human race on Earth appeared about 2 million years ago. And if we consider that it takes more than 2 million years for the light of, let's say, the great Andromeda Nebula as one of the neighboring galaxies, to reach us, it really turns out that we see not what there is now, but what there was at the time when there wasn't even a hint of the human presence on Earth. Rigdon, quite true. And what can be said about distant extragalactic objects? People see them as they were billions of years ago. Stars, even the ones that have the shortest of lives, exist much longer compared to the human civilization. I am not even talking about an ordinary person as an intelligent individual who, during his fleeting existence, often does not realize his true purpose, let alone something greater. His life, like vapor, appears for a moment and vanishes in a short instant. Besides, humankind itself belongs to the civilizations which are lost quickly. Although people are given the knowledge from time to time, in many cases, no sooner does such knowledge appear in the world than it immediately gets used for gaining power over others. This is, in fact, the human choice towards the animal nature. Only a few have enough time to take advantage of the knowledge for their spiritual development. The result of the choice is like water, which takes the shape of this or that vessel. Anastasia, unfortunately, this can be observed in the current civilization as well, where the human being is enslaved by his pernicious passions. Here is a recent example, people started exploring near-Earth space almost immediately after the ballistic missile and the atomic bomb had been invented. Rigdon, if humanity does not change its priorities in thinking towards the spiritual, then a sad fate awaits the civilization. As a rule, such civilizations are short-lived and exist for relatively short periods of time because they destroy themselves in wars. Anastasia, hmm. A hundred years, just like a thousand years, is nothing on the scale of the universe. Of course, practical observations of outer space objects are out of the question for a mortal human. Rigdon, human life is fleeting, that is true. But the human being is much more than just a body. That is why much knowledge was given to people initially, first of all, about the phenomena that are invisible to the human eye. So since the earliest times, people knew about the structure of the world and the universe, and about the multidimensionality of the human being, his essence, and mission. Another question is how such knowledge was usurped by the human ego, twisted beyond recognition by the mind limited in matter and in what form it has been preserved to the present day. Anastasia, alas, as if on purpose, Nowadays all this ancient knowledge of the peoples of the world is presented to people as mythology and ancient primitive beliefs. And inconvenient facts testifying to the knowledge of ancient people, which has been unknown even to present-day science until recently, are not commented on. Also, the entire science is based solely on the materialistic thinking. In astrophysics, for example, to study astronomical events, Analytical methods are often used for building models and theories and making predictions. Rigdon, grinned in the creaking cart of purely materialistic worldview, you will not go far in real science. Still, sooner or later, 
a true scientist will get to such scientific horizons where it won't be possible to use the existing supports, on which the whole chain of human reasoning rests. Nowadays, people often try to explain the invisible in terms of the visible. So we have woe from wit, in many cases, theories and accidentally discovered facts don't match. Scientists, for example, still do not have a clear understanding of what, for instance, electric current is, what exactly gravitation or a black hole is. And nevertheless, they operate with these concepts. Yet, in order to have a comprehensive understanding and delve into the nature of such phenomena, it is necessary to have a fundamentally different world perception, which is qualitatively different from the material worldview. Anastasia, understanding of the phenomena from the spiritual world. Rigdon, precisely. Anastasia, once you said, the universe is so vast that it cannot fit in the human consciousness. But there is not a single place in it where one could stick the thinnest medical needle without its tip resting against something or touching something. Rigdon, that is really so. And, answering the question, I will touch upon only a few very important subjects of astrophysics, naturally, in a form accessible to human thinking. However, understanding the essence of what will be said can give the people of science an entirely different view of the world structure. I shall begin with the modern theory and assumption, which is stereotypical for the modern educated mind, of the Big Bang that, as scientists believe, happened at the birth of the universe. They substantiate this popular hypothetical theory with the laws of thermodynamics. According to the given assumption, the universe was compressed to a point, and after the bang there appeared objects having a mass of around a billion tons and the size of a proton. Anastasia, as they say, what they currently know is what they substantiate it with. Scientists think they have studied well enough this branch of physics concerned with the laws of thermal equilibrium and conversion of heat into other kinds of energy. Even the term of thermodynamics itself, when translated from Greek, describes their debates in the scientific community very well, therm means heat, warmth, and dynamikos means powerful. Indeed, each of their disputes is full of heat and ardour. Rigdon, impassioned speech is not yet learnedness, one storm is not yet a season of rains. He who is strong in dispute enjoys the victory of one man, while the one who knows brings victory to thousands. Anastasia, as far as I know, the ratio of the powerful to the competent in modern science is disastrous in the sense that the former is numerous while the latter are far fewer. A knowledgeable person is valuable to any research team. He or she is like a proton, translated from Greek, it means protus, the first, like this elementary particle which always has a positive charge and which forms all the atomic nuclei. So is a knowledgeable person who, one can say, supports all the research of this team. Rigdon, that's true. I hope that the knowledge, which people will get, will increase the number of the knowing not only in science but also in the society in general, and change the understanding of the world, including the origin of the universe. As I have said before, today people fondly believe that the universe was compressed to a point, and after its Big Bang, there appeared objects having a mass of around a billion tons and the size of a proton. Furthermore, this mistaken belief from the mind says that such objects are nothing other than microscopic black holes. Alas, I have to disappoint the ardent theorists, such objects of a size of a proton and with the mass of around a billion tons are non-existent. However, there exists the following phenomenon in the nature of space, there are objects that are formed from information clusters, accumulations, during the discharge of information from matter when the latter gets into the area of the black hole. The largest and the heaviest compounds that information clusters can form are objects in size slightly larger than the proton and with the mass of little less than one gram, or 0.8 grams to be more precise. These objects are short-lived, that is, they exist for only fractions of a second, and then they break up into individual building blocks. The formation of such objects is indeed directly related to what people call black holes in the universe. Anastasia, objects slightly larger than the proton? 
According to the latest research, the radius of the proton is 0.84184 femtometer, 1 fm equals 10 to 15 meters. If we consider what you said, that such objects have the mass of slightly less than 1 gram, then they turn out to be really heavy objects for the microcosm. This information is exceptionally interesting. In the light of this, people may have at least three questions. What are information clusters, building blocks? What is the discharge of information from matter? And how is the formation of such particles connected with black holes in the universe? Rigdon, in this material world, everything, including what is currently known to people, from subatomic particles to atoms, from specks of dust on your shoes to accumulations of galaxies in deep space, everything exists thanks to structured information. It is structured information that creates matter and sets its properties, volume, shape, mass, and other characteristics. I draw your attention to the fact that we are now speaking not about the concept of information that is familiar to the human brain but of a somewhat different manifestation of it. Although even in the usual understanding, the word information has several meanings including the following, to think, teach, interpret, and to shape, form, create. For ease of understanding, let's call such structured information information building blocks. What are information building blocks in practice? Perhaps, I shall explain this with an associative example that is easy to understand. Imagine that you've decided to have a kind of experiment. For this you need water, a glass aquarium and small building blocks for making shapes, they are as light as foam plastic, and their color is, let's say, not the usual white but transparent. Your actions, in an empty glass aquarium, you build a beautiful castle, using the transparent building blocks of foam plastic, like child's toy construction set, with a lot of rooms, towers, etc. When you connect one transparent building block with another, there appears a certain color that is visible to your eye. In other words, you have a plan in your head how to build a castle, you have the will to create it and force, by applying which you are building with this unusual material. Next, you have built the castle, which became visible thanks to such connections, and now you can admire its beauty, volume, and the complexity of its architecture. Then, continuing the experiment, you fill the aquarium with water. What will happen? Suppose the water will be filling the aquarium with such a force, pressure, that it will destroy the castle you have constructed. At that, the foam plastic building blocks, which once were the walls, roofs and elements of your castle, will now start to flow to the water surface, some separately, becoming invisible again, and others will float in groups clusters, which still remain visible to the eye since they are connected with each other. Eventually, your entire structure will break up under the pressure of the water into separate building blocks, which will again become transparent. So, as they say, not a single trace of your castle will remain. If you remove all the water from the aquarium, the foam plastic building blocks will sink to the bottom. The blocks themselves, without your plan, will, an application of force, will never take shape of an orderly built castle. This will simply be a chaotic handful of transparent foam plastic building blocks invisible to the eye. You may shake your aquarium for as long as you wish, even for eternity, shuffling them, yet they will never become a castle until you build it again. So, these conditional transparent building blocks are a figurative comparison to the information that creates matter, setting certain parameters, shape, volume, mass, etc. to it. And the visible castle is already one of the material products of the ordered information, which forms elementary subparticles that make up atoms, molecules, chemical compounds, and so on, that is, the matter of the universe. And finally, the will, the construction plan, and the force of application are the main constituent forces of the spiritual world that manifest themselves in this world.